Hey guys, my name is Jamin. Thanks so much for visiting my channel. In this video, I have an Acer Nitro 5. This is the 8th gen version. I'm going to take you on a teardown and disassembly tour, show you how to get inside and all the major components you can access once you're in. So first thing guys, power down your computer the correct way. Make sure it's off and unplugged from your charger. Then we're going to flip your computer over to access your bottom case screws. We're going to go all the way around the outside of this computer. Take out all the screws all the way around the outside edge. You get these screws in the middle here, and we're going to need to take out this screw for the hard drive cover right there. So after you have all those screws taken off, we're going to pop open this hard drive cover, put a pry tool in, in this corner right there, pop that hard drive cover up, and then you're going to see your hard drive exposed in the caddy right there. This caddy has four screws, two on each side, these two, this one, and this one. We're gonna take out all those screws. And when you do that, grab this tab right here on top, pull the hard drive out carefully, and then unplug it from this connector right there. Once you do that, uh, we can take off this bottom case safely. So after that's done and all the screws are out, you're gonna take a small flat pry tool. I generally suggest plastic pry tools because they scratch your computer less. But in this case, I needed a metal one. I needed that extra strength. Um, the plastic pry tool wasn't getting it done. So uh, in this case, I'll suggest a, a metal pry tool. And you're going to go along this seam right here. You're going to flip your computer over again. This is your bottom case. This is your touchpad and your palm rest here. And that's your seam. You're going to get in there and slowly go around the entire seam, pry it up from the bottom case. When you're done, you can even press down here. When the hard drive's gone, you can press down there and take up the bottom case once you've uh, pried it up all the way across. After you've removed your bottom case, this is what you're looking at for the inside of your computer. Now, just as a computer repair side note, guys, whenever I'm operating on a computer, I have it sitting on an anti-static pad. Either that or an anti-static bracelet are great ideas to avoid damaging anything when you're working on your computer. If you guys need any help with any tools or supplies for your computer project, there'll be a link above. Also below in the description, it'll be a list of all the uh, tools and supplies that I use in my shop. Also in that list will be a list of all the replacement parts and upgrade parts for this specific uh, Nitro 5. Now, before doing anything in a computer, guys, the first thing I do is either remove or at least unplug my battery. It makes it safer to work on a computer when as little power as possible is running through it. So I'll show you how to remove the battery if you want to and how to unplug it. So here's your battery right there. To get the battery out, you have a screw here on the right and here on the left. You would take those screws up. And then this battery plugs in with these wires right here on the motherboard, and it's a pretty easy plug. You don't want to pull on wires in a computer as much as possible. You want to just manipulate the plug if you can. So with this plug, it's very easy. You'll see in your computer, guys, is a grip right here on the left and on the right. So you can use your fingernails and pull it out, or you can use a pry tool and push it out of this port but that's how you would get that battery out. For those of you that wanted the battery specs, this battery is an AC1 4B8K, 15.2 uh, volt, 48 watt hour. All that information will be below in the description, as well as a replacement battery in that link list I told you about earlier. The next thing I'll show you here is your solid state drive. You have a single M.2 port right there. There's a screw right here on top. You undo that screw and the solid state drive comes out of this port. Uh, now this solid state drive, this is an NVMe. Again, it's an M2 port, and this can support Gen 4 solid state drive. So below in that link with all the replacement and upgrade parts, I'll try to have a few different upgrade options for you. Um, I don't know what you have in your computer, but I'll try to have a 500 gig, a terabyte, and a two terabyte option in there for you if you're looking to upgrade. Uh, the next thing is your RAM right here. You have two ports, and many of you stock will only have one stick of RAM, uh, but there's two ports right here. The way you work RAM is it has two metal spring-loaded arms on either side. The way to get the RAM out is to pry those arms gently apart from each other, away from the RAM stick. The RAM stick will then release, and you can slide it out of the, out of the port. Uh, to put it back in, you notice there's a long part here to the port and, and a short section there. 
So you can only get this ram stick in one way, the correct way. You can't get it in upside down. So after you put it in, make sure it's flush. The gold line here, make sure it's nice and straight. And then you press down in the center and those spring loaded arms will latch onto it and secure it in place. Now, as far as the RAM specs, you're looking at DDR4, uh, 3200 megahertz. The RAM that was in here was a PC4, 25600. And I believe this computer maxes out at 32 gigabytes. Um, so you can't hurt your computer by having too much RAM in it. It just won't access the extra RAM. So you're just wasting your money. So um, below in the link with all the replacement parts, I'll have a single 16 gigabyte stick for those of you that are just replacing a bad one you don't really want to spend the extra money to upgrade uh, but for those of you that that want to max out your ram i'll have a couple kits in there uh, two 16 sticks to max out your 32 gigabytes and i always think that's a really cheap really easy way to max out um, one aspect of your computer's performance is just maxing out your ram uh, the next thing i can show you guys is after you remove your battery you're going to expose your CMOS battery right here. Uh, this is often called your motherboard battery or your BIOS battery. Um, this is what keeps power to BIOS even when your computer's off. So if you guys are looking to replace this battery, uh, this is just held on by double-sided tape. So you can pop that off fairly easily and it plugs into the motherboard right here. Uh, there are two little grips on either side so you can use your fingernails if you can get your fingers in there or you can use a, a pry tool to push that out. If you guys are not here to replace your CMOS battery, if you're just here to reset BIOS, um, you don't need to physically remove the battery. You can leave it there. Just unplug it for 15, 20 seconds, and that should be sufficient to reset your BIOS system settings. So the next thing I'll shout out is your Wi-Fi card down here. There's a single screw right there, and then you have your antenna wire that run around the fan up through this hinge assembly here. So those are just snaps. Those just snap right off of the Wi-Fi card and then they snap back onto it. They can be a pain to get on if you're not used to it. Um, and, and, and they're a little fragile. So don't push on it so much that you can bend those plugs because you can damage them. Uh, just try to get it at a 90 degree angle, straight up and down. Um, take your time, be patient, and you'll be able to snap those back on. And then your Wi-Fi card, if you're looking to remove it, pulls to the left out of this port right here. You have your USB board here, uh, the ribbon cables that connect it. Uh, you have your main motherboard here, your LCD cable over here. If you guys are messing with these ribbon cables, um, these type of plugs are very fragile in, in laptops. So the way that you work this type of plug, same thing over here with these ribbon cables, you see the black clip right there. That black clip opens like a book cover and it's very fragile and very easy to break. So it, it opens at the right and it hinges here on the left. So the way to get that out is to gently put a small, very flat pry tool in there and pop that black clip up and then the ribbon cable can come out. Um, but again, very fragile black clip. Be very careful. If you break it, you're probably not going to find a replacement. You may need to get another board um, in order to have your ribbon cable fully latched down well. Uh, the other thing, this is your power jack here where your charger plugs in comes over here, plugs into the motherboard right there. So this is a little more beefy wire setup. You may be able to grab those wires and 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 pull this out a little safer than you can the other ones. Uh, there's also a little hole right there where you can put a pry tool and sort of pry that out a little bit there. Uh, the last thing I'll shout out is your fan, your heat sink assembly. These are your two fans. They have two screws in them. Uh, this right one plugs into the motherboard right here under the ribbon cable port. And this fan plugs into the motherboard here. Very fragile wires uh, definitely operate the plug rather than the wires here. You can use your fingernails and either grip either side or a, a pry tool. Uh, you can get the fans out that way. And then your heat sink comes through the fan here. A couple screws there, four screws over the CPU. I guess last thing I can shout out is your, is your speakers. You got this speaker on the right, this speaker on the left. They connect by these wires down here under the battery. And then they connect here and then go to this speaker and they plug into the motherboard right here. They go down the, the battery here and they plug into the motherboard right here underneath that piece of tape. So again, very fragile wires like your fans. Don't, don't pull on the wire to get that out. The speakers themselves are not plugged in. There's these little red rubber washers that go over the posts for sound insulation. You can just wiggle those speakers off. They're not screwed down. 
um, and then again, un unplug it here. And most or all of these replacement parts, guys, they'll all be in that list if you're looking for replacement parts for this model computer. Um, also, if you're here to clean out your fans or your heat sink or reapply thermal paste, there'll be a video link above, also below in the description, showing you how to reapply thermal paste. You definitely want to clean all the old stuff off very well, and you don't want to put too much uh, new thermal paste or cooling paste down. So there'll be a little video tutorial if you guys need that. But that was a quick tutorial on how to access most of the major components in this model computer. So that's the video, guys. I hope it was helpful. If you have any questions, check out the FAQs below in the description. It could save you some time getting an answer. If you do need to leave me a question or comment, please do. I do try to get to those a couple times a day at least. To support the channel, please remember to like and share, subscribe if you enjoy this type of DIY tutorials, and for those of you that want to support the channel a little further, you can always leave a small donation, and there's a couple ways to do that. First, right below the video to the right hand side, you'll see the super thanks button. You can click on that. You can select a tip amount here. Second way, you can use your cash app. Find me at dollar sign PC helper. You can leave a dollar amount and you can even leave a little note. So thank you so much for watching guys and I look forward to seeing you on my next video.